Hey everyone, it is 8.30 and we are on our last demo for the evening and we are doing better burgers and we almost came on <laughs> really late because Gordon and I were meow, 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 on those zucchini fries, those cheesy crunchy zucchini fries with Cajun aioli. They were really, really good. Anyways, we're now on to burgers. What's returning? So everybody knows Epicure does amazing burgers. If you saw my post on that beef, you know I made a whole bunch of burgers and that's with our burger seasoning. So it is back. It's delicious. You basically just take it, mix it with some ketchup in a bowl. You can add other stuff if you want. We don't even bother. We got our burger seasoning is back and then they brought two other ones that came they came out a couple years ago now but Tuscan chicken and the West Coast burger sort of a fish burger although it's good in chicken as well and the Tuscan chicken burger seasoning burgers oh, if you've tried them I'd love to hear which one you like I love burgers we love burgers so and the last sauce that I didn't mention earlier was the big burger sauce it's sort of like a healthier version of that Big Mac sauce. So it's got relish and ketchup and the seasonings and mayo and it's quite delicious. And you can actually make a potato salad with it. There's a recipe online. So that's what's come back. But Epicure has brought out two new burger seasonings. So if you're an Epic Box subscriber, you've already got your hands on one of them because it was in your box. So. Kickin' Jalapeno. That's the first burger seasoning. We're not actually making it tonight. It's a bit on the spicier side. And so one of the things that they recommend is if, if you find it a little bit spicier, just use a little bit less because it's got real jalapenos in it. So jalapenos and jalapenos. Who knows how it's said? Those peppers <laughs> and some garlic and put it, put slather it with guacamole. And you know who makes the best guacamole? Epicure. You can slather it with guacamole, you can put tomatoes on it, you could do a roasted garlic aioli on it. All those kinds of things would bring down the heat a little bit if you find it a bit too spicy. But get them jalapeno, you can have that in your burger. But we're going to do something I've never tried, although I do like Vietnamese food. So we are going to do the bun mi. Bun, I, I did listen to how I'm supposed to say it, but I can't say it. So bun mi is how I'm going to say it. And it's sort of lemongrass, there's big chunks of onion in it, and it's suggested to do it with pork or pork and beef. I just decided to do an all pork burger. I've never done an all pork burger. So here it is, but rather than make up the beef first, I'm going to do the toppers for on our salad, because I get to show you another one of our tools, which I think is amazing. We're all about multi-purpose tools, and I know I'm not sure if Oh, yep, Darlene's there. Oh, bur big burger sauce is the bomb. <laughs> I know that she likes our mandolin as well. Four in one, so you can have thin slices, thick slices, julienne really tiny, or julienne a little bit thicker. So we're going to use this bad boy to do up the vegetables that are going to be on the top of this. Unlike most sort of Western burgers where we like cheese and bacon and lettuce and all those kinds of things, this one, they suggest using cucumber and carrots and red onion. So that's what we're going to put on it. I don't know if anybody's ever had a burger like this. Would love to hear. Or if anybody's even interested in a burger like this. My watch. I don't know about this thing. I just don't want it to get in the burger when we get to the burger. So here we go. We have the four in one. And I have put on the one and a half millimeter. So there's one and a half. That's the really thin and then the three and a half. And what I'm gonna do is do the red onion on the really thin. And this is how easy it is. Hopefully you can see this. There is a guard. Do I have the guard out? I don't have the guard out right now because, oh, yes, I do right here. There's a guard on it that you can just push that on there to protect your hands. And you can just go, and I'll just show you how thin that is. So we're gonna do up a little bit of onion and the thing I like about this is because onion can be a little bit overpowering with red onion, I'm making it thin. So it's super, super thin. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that up for a garnish. Kind of reminds me of there's a Vietnamese um, restaurant by my sister and we like their subs. So 
maybe this seasoning will be nice and we can make our own subs. But so there's our red onion. I'm not going to do that much because my husband and I, we like a little bit, but, but see how thin that is? It just super, super thin, super, super easy. Okay, we're going to pop that puppy out. Don't need any more onion. And I'm going to pop this out. So this is how the four one works. Can you see that little button on the back there? You just push it and out it pops. And then you have this handy dandy little storage case for the four different blades you have. So I'm gonna just put this one aside and I am going to get out the three and a half millimeter. So this is a little bit thicker. I'm gonna make our cucumber just a little bit thicker. And again, you just put the nose in. Super. Now I'm gonna just Never have too much cucumber, can you? Maybe on the burger, but on this it'll be okay. So we got some cucumber, and it's just that little bit thicker. I don't know if you can tell. Love it. Again, we're gonna use that little button on the back, pop it out, and I'm going to julienne some carrots. So it actually suggested, I'm looking at the recipe, it says to do matchstick carrots. So those are a little bit thicker, and I'll just show you the two different blades. So here's the two different blades to show you how big it will be. So I'm going to do some carrots in this. Again, I'm just going to pop the bottom in there. It tells you when it's in because it, it just clicks in. Okay. I say that and then it doesn't do it on video. Mm. Clipped in there. Oh, there's a question. Are you talking about lemongrass? I'm not too sure, Nancy. There's lemongrass in this seasoning. If you maybe want to say a little bit more, or maybe I missed something I had said. So, oh, the sub place. Yes, lemongrass restaurant. That is the one I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm going to just do the carrots on here, and I'll show you what it comes out looking like. Carrots obviously are a little bit thicker and a little harder, but this mandolin has no problem with carrots, even. And look at that. So there's the thicker. And it'll be really nice on our sandwich. So I'm going to just put that aside. So I have carrots and cucumber and red onion to decorate my burger. And decorate just sounds fun. Okay, I'm going to just put this aside. And now for the burger. And this is how easy our burgers are. This one is even easier than our regular burger thing because you don't even have to add anything other than the seasoning. So I have a pound of pork here, and I'm not worried, if I washed my hands before, all I did was vegetables. If we get a few vegetables in this burger, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna take off my ring, and we have the banh mi <laughs> on here, and we're just going to add two tablespoons to a pound. Oh, actually, what I should show you before, because I'm going to use it, and my hands will probably be a bit gunky our three-in-one burger press. So if you saw my post with the burgers, they're all perfectly round, perfectly squished. This is a three-in-one burger press. The beauty of it is, here's where you do. There's two little discs, easy to clean. This just pops on the bottom. You put your four ounces or your six ounces of meat in there, and then you just take this top, squish it, pop it out. That's what I'm gonna do with these pork ones tonight. But the three-in-one is because, Inside this lid, there is also a baby. So if you wanted to make like little sliders for an appetizer at a party or something like that, you do the same thing. You just put your one or two ounces of meat in there and then just squish it flat and you've got a little slider, which I did do one time for a party. And then the three, so that's the two ways. And then the third way is if you take that, this was on top of here, take it off and you'll see that little thing in the middle there you would put sort of a couple probably about two or three ounces of your meat you squish it down and then you take this and you can go squish and what it does it makes a little pocket and you can fill it with whatever you want so if you're doing the jalapeno burger and you like spicy you could fill it with some cheese and jalapenos um, you could do this one you could add 
I don't know what you would add to this one because I've never tried this flavor. <laughs> but anything can go in there. And then you put the other rest on it. You put the top on it. Squish the rest of the meat on top. And you have a stuffed burger. So three in one. We're going to make just plain regular burgers because we've got lots of flavors to put on top. And I'll just put this away. The beauty of it is, is it all stacks inside itself and it's nice and tiny. So I'm going to put that away. And if you don't have one of these in your kitchen, they're perfect. That's how I split all of our packages in half. And this is how I will weigh out the pound is 16 ounces. I can make four perfectly divided four ounce patties by putting it in here. So, and then I always just put them on here if we're going to go straight out to the barbecue, because then you just slip it up, put it on the barbecue, or I put it on here and throw it in the freezer and then take them off and put them in a container because then they all freeze nice and solid. So we have our pork. And again, it can be whatever you want. It can be chicken, it can be turkey. Although if you've used chicken, you've seen my video, chicken's not as easy to handle. Um, pork or pork and beef. So we're going to throw a couple tablespoons of this seasoning. And you can see the big hunks of onions. Here, I'm going to just show you. Can you see that? Like, look at how amazing that is. You can see all the natural chunks of food in there. So I'm going to just put my lid on this. Oh, I'm not because I don't know why I did that. So there it is, all just in a bowl. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to just make sure I have everything in its place so that I don't <laughs> make a big mess. And I'm going to just mix this up. And I just think like this would be really good. Like you could put it in like a sub, like what I talk about with my sisters. You could use this seasoning because you can even smell it like right now. It's, it's quite nice. And I think with these flavors, it would go well with eggs. I think it would pair well just on chicken. I'm just going to make sure it mixes in there really well. Oh wow, this smells. <laughs> I'm really excited to try this because I've never made like Vietnamese like burgers or anything like that. So I don't know who's who's excited. I see Darlene toss red onion in some lime juice and it mellows the sharp taste. Oh, that's a great idea. What they also suggest was if you pickle the vegetables. I didn't pickle them because I didn't have time to do the pickling of them, but they suggest even pickling them to make them that little bit of, I guess, sweet because you put a bit of sugar and you put a little bit of vinegar and then you heat them up. So. There it is all nicely mixed in there. I'm going to make sure it's mixed in. And this is how easy it is. Although I didn't get out a weigh scale. Or I got my weigh scale up, but I forgot a plate. So I'm going to just eyeball it. And I'll show you how easy it is to make these burgers. So I'm going to cut it in half. Make sure it's all folded in flavors. And I'm going to cut this in half. And that'll be our roughly four ounces for a burger. And this is quite exactly how easy it is. So you just take your little ball, pop it in your, so there it is in my burger press. And you squeeze it down. I do find pork is a little stickier like chicken, but not as <laughs> sticky as chicken. So and then you pull it out. And here's where I'm going to show you the magic of, this is like a perfectly shaped perfectly pressed so it'll stay together on your barbecue, which is also the key. And look at that, perfectly shaped. And by the wonders of television, I'll just have my husband show you because I actually made a couple of these burgers in advance. I'm gonna just put this off to the side and have him show it. And then I'm gonna wash my hands really quick and then we're just gonna plate it up real, real quick. So Gord, do you wanna just show them the, the burgers? Hello everybody. So while Janice was doing her live demonstration of how to make the burgers, I was actually cooking and barbecuing them. So you can see there's crosshatch on there. 
And so I will pass it back to Jen so she can plate it up and show you. Oh, look at the juices. Well, we taste it. <laughs> this is the best part of my job. So we just have a basic bun. We are going to throw one of our pork burgers on here. We're going to throw a little bit of onion on here. Be interested to know, like they didn't suggest any kind of aioli or anything like that on here. It seems like Darlene kind of knows a little bit more about this kind of this kind of food. But I'm wondering whether anybody has any recommendations of what they might suggest would be nice on this. But I'm going to eat how it says, just so I can tell you how it looks. But put some carrots on there. It'd definitely not be your traditional North American burger. And it won't look like the pictures you see in Epicure's catalogs, but it'll taste just as good. <laughs> so look at that. There's our bun me burger, and we're going to be able to eat it hot off the grill. So I'm going to ask Gord to come up because we're going to do a draw. And so your choice, whoever wins, gets to pick between the two new ones. So if you want the kickin' jalapeno or you want to try this bun me burger, the choice is yours. So hopefully you've said hi, because that's how he catches and makes sure everybody gets added. And look at that burger. Too bad we ate most of the zucchini fries already. <laughs> but I'll invite Gord back up. Thanks again. Hi everybody, last draw for the evening. So let's see who the lucky winner is going to be. Kathy. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. So you get your choice. You can pick either the bun meat or the kick and jalapeno. And if you're coming to the open house, you can always pick it up there if you happen to be in town. Um, but again, just want to say like the biggest thank you for spending your Friday night with me, allowing me to share my passion for what I get to do. Um, I love being an Epicure ambassador. I love sharing good food. I, I think it's awesome and it's easy. I just showed you, we were only on, it's like 15 minutes and I pulled together a burger. I mean, obviously it would have been on the, the grill for about five minutes, six minutes, but 20 minutes and you have a delicious meal on your table. So hopefully you're as excited as I am about this spring catalog. Um, hopefully you'll join me. Again, the date is April 22nd for the live one. If you would actually like to come and try some samples. So we'll sample what I did here tonight but I'll also throw a few more dishes in for you guys to try. So hope to see you on the 22nd. Again, from my heart to you, I just say a big thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your long weekend. Bye.